Hi Grade 11s, today we are doing exponents and thirds from this question paper and I'll be doing question 2 with you. So let's start. 2.1 says simplify the following. So as you can see Grade 11s, this is exponents. Do you see there's a minus and at the bottom there's a plus that separates the terms. So whenever you see a plus or a minus that separates terms, I know I'm going to factorize and then I'm going to cancel. So let's start 2.1. Okay, so step number one is to change any base number. This is a base number, this is a base number, this and this. We have to change any base number that's not a prime number. 2 is a prime number, 4 is not, so 4 is not and 2 is. So I'm only going to change the 4, say. Eh? I rewrite so that 4 becomes 2 to the 2 okay so that 4 becomes 2 to the 2 I keep it in brackets x plus 1 and this 4 at the bottom also becomes 2 to the 2 I keep it in brackets x step number 2 is to remove any brackets say eh? so do you see here we have a bracket and there we have a bracket. So we are going to remove those brackets. Eh? So I always keep the base. I'm just going to multiply the powers. This times this. This times this. And this times this. Everything else is going to stay the same. Eh? So I'm just going to rewrite this. That base stays the same. So 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 1 is a positive 2. Over. This 2 stays 2. 2 times x is 2x, and everything else stays the same. Okay, so let's continue over here. So now that I have prime bases and the brackets are removed, I'm going to split things up. Now, wherever you have two terms in the exponent, so here you have one term in the power, so I'm not focusing on that one. Here I have two terms in the power. Yeah, I have one term, so okay, not that one. Yeah, I have two terms in the power. So where I have two terms in the power, I'm going to split those up. So I keep 2 to the 2x. Then I'm going to split this up now. It's 2 to the 2x times 2 to the positive 2. So 2 to the 2x and 2 to the positive 2. Can you see? I split that up. And then at the bottom, this will stay the same. Plus, now I'm splitting that up, 2 to the 2x and 2 to the negative 1. So 2 to the 2x and 2 to the negative 1. Okay, now that you've split it up, now you can factorize, eh? So I ask myself, what is here that is also there? Okay, 2 to the 2x. So I'm taking that out. Open bracket. So I'm going to factorize, eh? So when you factorize, this is what you do. You say this over what I took out will give me the first term. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say this over what I took out. Can you see it's something over itself? So this will cancel. The answer is 1. So inside the bracket, I'm therefore going to have a 1. And because there is a minus, I have a minus here. Then to get this term over here, I'm going to say this over what I took out. So let's do that. So I'm going to say this over what I took out. And this and this can cancel. So what's left? 2 to the 2. So 2 to the 2, 2 to the 2. Okay, now I'm going to do the same for the denominator. What is here that's also here? 2 to the 2x. So I take out 2 to the 2x, open bracket, and then I say this over what I took out. So this over what you took out. They will cancel. The answer is 1. So here I will have a 1. There is a plus. So I will have a plus, And then I do this over what I took out. This and this will cancel. I'm left with that. Okay, so let's continue. I'm going to continue on this side. 
So after you factorize, you can cancel, eh? So now this and this can cancel. Then on your calculator, you put this. Just make sure you don't use decimals as your answer. So that answer will give you a negative 3. And then you can also put this on the calculator. That answer will give you a 3 over 2. Can you see I keep my fractions? And then my final answer is negative 2. And there you solved it. So how do we mark this? Do you see the prime basis that you changed? You changed this one and this one. That's a mark. So that's one mark. I am referring to this one and that one. That is one mark. Then for breaking it up. Remember we broke it up. We broke this up and that up. That would be another mark. So on this memo they gave a mark for that. Then taking out the highest common factor here and factorizing. That would be another mark. And then for your answer that's another mark. So that's how you would get your four marks. Grade 11. Look at 2.2. It says we have to solve for x. Eh? We're not simplifying. We are solving for x. So let's write our question down. So let's start. So the first thing I'll do here is get rid of this number in front of x. We don't want the number in front of x. So I get x to the 3 over 2. And on this side I get 27. So now I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Eh? This is way number 1. I change 27 to a prime base. Eh? So this is 3 to the 3. Then to get rid of the rational exponent. I'm going to multiply with the reciprocal. The opposite of that fraction. So that fraction is 3 over 2. That means I must multiply with 2 over 3. So 2 over 3. But what you do on the left. You must do on the right. So let's continue. This 3 will cancel. This 3. 2 and 2 will cancel. I'm only left with x. This 3 and that 3 will cancel. 3 to the 2. And 3 to the 2 is 9. So x is equal to 9. That was one way of doing it. Another way of doing it. Grade 11's. Is just to take this as it is. Eh? And just say 2 over 3. 2 over 3. And then this and this will cancel. I'm left with x. And then you put this in your calculator. And you will also get 9. And that question was for 3 marks. So for dividing by 3. That's a mark. Raising to the reciprocal. So raising to 2 over 3. That was a mark. And then for the answer. That's how you get your 3 marks. Okay, our next question. We are solving for x. Eh? Okay, so here's our question. We have 3 terms. 1, 2, 3. Three. So the first thing I would do is break this up. This stays the same. 3. So now this is 2 to the 1 and 2 to the negative x. Now when we are solving x, we don't like a negative power. Eh? So to make that negative power a positive, I'm going to bring it down. So let me show you. This will stay the same. Plus 5. 3 times 2 to the 1 is 2. Then I'm going to bring that down. So the negative x becomes a positive x. So to make this sum easier, I'm going to let 2 to the x be k. So wherever there's a 2 to the x, I'm going to make that k. So my equation is going to look like this. This is k. That is k. So I'm going to rewrite this thing. It becomes k plus 5 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6. 6 over k. Now, when you have something in the denominator like a variable, we're going to get rid of this variable. We don't want k in the denominator. So to get rid of it, I'm going to multiply every term by k. So I'm going to multiply this by k, this by k, and that by k. So let's do that. So I'm going to say k times k is k squared. So that's k squared. 5 times k is 5k. And then 6 over k times k. So this k and that k will cancel. The answer is 6. Now our equation looks much more manageable. Eh? So I'm going to bring the 6 over. You can use the quadratic formula. I'm going to factorize. You don't have to factorize. Eh? So k and k. 
and then I have it's a six and a one and it is a plus and a minus okay so k is a negative six or k is a positive one but the question was never to solve for k. The question was to solve for x. So then I go back to the statement over here. I said, what is k? 2 to the x is k. So I'm going to say that, therefore, 2 to the x is equal to negative 6. Or 2 to the x is equal to 1. So I get the negative 6 from there and the 1 from there. And now I'm going to solve this. Eh? So now I have to make the base numbers the same. 2 and 6, I can never change 6 to have a base number. So there is no solution for that side. For the other side, 2 to the x, 1 I can write as 2 to the 0. When the base numbers are the same, they are the same, this is equal to that. So my final answer is x is equal to 0. And that's how you do that sum. Let's mark and see how you would get marks for this. So the first thing you would get a mark for is breaking this up. Then, for multiplying everything by this k over here, ne? that's a mark. So that will give you a mark. Then, the memo gave a mark for factorizing or using the formula. Then, for both answers. So you must have two answers. Eh? Then you get a mark for that. And then your final mark is for the final answer over here. There, you get a mark. So there's your five marks. One, two, three, four, five marks. Question 2.3 says, given that this fraction is equal to this expression over here, determine the values of A and B without the use of a calculator. Okay. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to simplify that. Eh? And then I'm going to see, can't I write it like that so that I can have the values of A and B. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing I would do here is rationalize the denominator. Do you remember how to rationalize the denominator? If you have two terms in your denominator, you rationalize by doing the following. You multiply this fraction with the denominator. But instead of a plus, you change it to a minus. This becomes 3 minus 2 root 2 over 3 minus 2 root 2. So I'm going to rewrite this now as one fraction. So 1 plus root 2 times 3 minus 2 root 2. It looks better if I write it like that. Then let's do the denominator. Okay. So now I'm going to multiply this out. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times negative 2 root 2 is negative 2 root 2. Root 2 times 3 is plus 3 root 2. And root 2 times 2 root 2 is negative 2. Root 2 times root 2. It's 2 times 2. So I'm going to write that on the side here. There's an invisible 1. So let me just show you. 1 times 2 is 2. And then root 2 times root 2. So root 2 times root 2 is a positive 2. So that also gives you a 2. So that's where that comes from. In my denominator, this is a plus and this is a minus. Eh? And the terms look exactly the same. 3 and 3. 2 root 2. 2 root 2. So when we have something like that, we only have to multiply the first term with the first term. So that's 9 minus 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Let me do it here. 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Root 2 times root 2. So this times that is 2. So okay. Let's write that down. So this becomes a 4 and a 2. Before we add like terms, let's simplify 2 times 2 and 4 times 2 over there. So I'm going to rewrite this. It's a 3 minus 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2 minus 4. 
over 9 minus 8. Okay, so I wrote that down. Now I'm going to add the like terms. This is a 3 and this is a negative 4. So that's a negative 1. Then this is a negative 2 root 2 and this is a positive 3 root 2. You can put that on your calculator. Just don't use decimals, eh? But if you don't want to use your calculator, you can look at it like this. Negative 2x plus 3x gives me a 1x. So therefore, negative 2 root 2 is the x. Plus 3 root 2 is a positive 1 root 2. So root 2 is like the x over here. Eh? They are like terms. But of course, you can use your calculator. This will give you plus 1 root 2. And 9 minus 8 over here gives me a positive 1. Okay, so I've simplified this, but it still doesn't look like that. So I want it to look like that. So anything over 1 is that thing. So the thing on top is the negative 1 plus root 2. So this expression over here has a root of something and a number. We also have a root of something and a number. I'm just going to switch them around. Eh? So this is the same as root 2 minus 1. So isn't this then the A that's over here? And isn't this the B that's over there? Then A is definitely the thing under the root. So A is 2. And B is the number by itself. Negative 1. And there you solve the for 5 marks. Let's mark this quickly and then we're done. So rationalizing the denominator, eh? then simplifying this whole thing. Eh? So doing all your simplification there, that's a mark. Then for getting this answer, that's a mark. And then for saying A is the number under the root, B is the number without the root. And that is how you get your five marks.